Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today's video is part two, which hopefully is going to be the last part of this particular video series on the EMS Radeon RX 580 SP2048. I had to remember what it actually is, it's been such a long time waiting for the replacement parts, which hopefully are the right ones. Anyway, keep watching to find out. Okay, so today's video is hopefully going to wrap up this uh, very short mini-series on the Emils Radeon RX 58 580 SP2048. This has been a bane in my life, it really has. Luckily today, literally um, moments ago, this parcel has arrived, which potentially could be from myself, or potentially could be from Ugly Bob. We, well, Bob got drunk and ordered some spare fans. Um, I did it sober a couple of days later. So this could be his, could be mine. Not entirely sure. I'm hoping they're going to fit because we weren't sure if these are going to be the right fans. Potentially it looks like it might be the right fit-ins, but until we strip it all down and try and connect it, we're going to have no real clue. Worst part of the whole situation is the actual connector for the fan is buried underneath the heat sink. So you have no choice but to remove the entire heat sink. I don't even think with the best dexterity in the world that that is going to be possible. I am actually even tempted to cut a small section of the metal away just to leave that free of access for later. But anyway, we'll see what the deal is. So let's take a look first of all and see what the fans are like. This is how it turned up. I have briefly had a look just to make sure it wasn't damaged, which I'm actually quite surprised that it wasn't because it's not been packaged in the best way. So we've got some bubble wrap there and basically there are fans unprotected smashed against each other yeah it's uh not the best way of doing it so let's take a quick look and see if they actually spin freely because that is going to be the first part of this whole situation because that is the problem with the previous ones so yes that appears to spin freely so moderately happy with that uh, this cabling has come undone a little bit so let's try the same with the other one just make sure my fingers aren't uh, fouling it in any way that appears to be spinning freely as well. Excellent stuff. And the connector looks like it is the right one. It should well be, but we'll uh, we'll see. And hopefully this fan is pretty much identical. It does appear to be identical, but uh, until we get it all apart again, we're not going to know for sure. So let's uh, hope and pray that everything goes as planned. So we're going to now strip the graphics card down and have a quick look to see what is going on. I can't even remember what type of screws were on this thing. There was a, a whole mixture of screws. So I think we start off with a PH0 for the side ones. The screws on this uh, don't particularly match up well with the actual shroud. That one actually came out okay. This one I think is probably gonna be, uh, I thought that was lodged in, so that's okay. And we've got another two on the other side. So that is our four screws removed. And I think from that, this section yep, comes out pretty much in its entirety. Now I don't know if I can actually get away with just simply unplugging this block connector, which hopefully you can just about make out. I'll probably zoom in on that. So there is a block connector there, but it does look a different color, which is a little bit concerning. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna be able to plug that in at all. And I think one of those actually goes off to the board. So let's take that apart. Yeah, so that's only going to disconnect. Ironically, it's only going to disconnect the one fan which actually does work. So yeah, that is a little bit of a pain. Now, one of the fans obviously has come out altogether because that section there is well, yeah, uh, busted. So I'm going to try and remove this. Now, there's no real easy way of getting these out. They're not screwed in. So it's a very, very kind of delicate bit of plastic. So just a twist and these just pop out, so there you go. There's just literally a push in connection. So let's see if we can match this up now with one of these fans. Hmm. I'm not entirely convinced. So if we disconnect this one and put it back in where it was, which I believe was this side, 
So there's a little pinhole there, a little pinhole there. So this is going to be the first part to see if that matches up. So that side definitely does. That side definitely doesn't. Maybe a little stretch. Okay, so yeah, a little bit of a stretch and it has, it has attached. Whether or not it's going to stay there is another matter. And does it spin freely? Yes, it does. So yeah, it does look a very, very small amount different. Let's have a look. I'm going to give you a close up of that so you can see what it's like. So you can see there, there's the fan close up. And you can see here at the bottom, that's where it just pushes in. And there's another one there at the top section. So yeah, it looks okay. I'm not sure if I actually put it on upside down. Maybe that should be on this side. But anyway, let's uh, get the other one in and uh, yeah, we'll make sure it all fits in nicely. Hmm. I'm not overly convinced that is right, but still, we will proceed. So now we need to take the rest of it apart. So in theory, it should just be, I think, just these uh, screws on the bottom. So I'll try with the main four screws there. We might need to take the other one out as well. So one, if you're doing this ideally, you should really be trying to do them in an equal manner to make sure the paste and all that kind of stuff spreads and or isn't disturbed too much. But realistically, we're probably gonna redo the paste anyway, so. Right, now we're gonna need those extra screws undone as well. So actually, the back plate on this particular board is actually really nice. They have done a very good job of that. And are these screws all the same? Yes, they appear to be. So in theory now, we should be able to just separate this cooler. Yeah, it was uh, quite well stuck on there and using some of the most horrible paste I've seen in a long time. So now we should really take some attention to actually how this is all connected up and how it's wired through. So if I put this down a moment and we'll get the new fan set, the new fans rather. So this is effectively gonna be replacing that and it has got a different connector, so I can't just use the existing wiring. So let's disconnect this one. And does that look anything like this one? It does appear to be very similar. So let's run that through there. plug this new cable in. Happy days. So in theory now I could just put this back on pretty much as it is. I don't think it would make a great deal of difference either way to be honest with you. So yeah, that does go along that channel and back in something a little like that. And yeah, you get the general idea. So that is gonna be okay I think. I think it's probably a good idea to replace the thermal paste on this anyway. So let's go ahead and do that just for the lols. So not really a great deal of mess here, although that's kind of solidified. So we should be able to just wipe it off with a paper towel. Slightly unusual paste there. And I'm going to do the same on the GPU side. That worked out well because there is an RGB glow right in the middle of the uh, the CPU, oh, sorry, GPU die, which was an unintended effect. It's quite mirror-like actually. So we're going to be using some uh, Arctic MX6 kindly sent to us by both Ugly Bob and Dave Aiken. So thank you both very much. And we're going to put a little bit on there. With this, less is more because you don't want too much, and that might be too much already. And I'm going to get a very small spreader 
and just spread that around the top of the die. So you can use a little plastic spatula and just spread this across the die to make sure that it's all covered. It will squish out a bit by itself when the uh, heat sink is pushed on. Try and get a decent cover on there. And get out as many air bubbles as humanly possible. There will be some microscopic ones. I think I'm actually just making it worse now. MX6 is one of those pastes that doesn't really like to be uh, mould around with too much. So we've got the, uh, the top back on now, so I'm just going to do a couple of screws on each one of the spring-loaded screws. Is that not catching? Let's push that one out, so that one wasn't in very well. Yeah, so it needs a little bit more pressure to get it started. So about two or three turns on each one should be enough. That one doesn't like it. It might be the screwdriver. Or it could be the owner. That's done up. That one's done up. And that is it. So we've got our cable coming through the side, which isn't really long enough. It's just a little bit on the short side, so... That is gonna, gonna be a proverbial pain in the backside. I can see it happening. Let's see if I can get this lined up. So, uh, this is that, that side. Yeah, because it was the one on this side which was missing, I believe, when we started. So this doesn't really make a great deal of difference, but then our cable is in a, uh, a pretty bad place right there. That way would be a little bit easier. I don't suppose it makes a great deal of difference whichever way it's on. As long as it actually cools and touches, almost everything about this sucks. Yeah, just, it's, oh, I'm losing the will to live. Is this the right way? That one was the one that was hanging off, wasn't it? And that was the one we put in first of all. I am kind of talking to myself right now. I, uh, I appreciate that. Let's try and get this connected. A mental note to self, don't buy another one of these cars. It is too much faffing around and the, uh, the connection itself doesn't quite stretch. So I've got to push that over a little bit. And it kind of holds in. So that might do it. If I can just get that to stay in place without actually obscuring any of the fans and get the screws back in, I think we'll be all right. But I don't think that's gonna happen. There needs to be some way of actually keeping those cables out of the way, which there kind of isn't really. And I can't have the cable running down the side there because the screws go in through that side and into the actual GPU itself. This is a horrible design. I'm just watching the video feed at the moment and I'm thinking this is going to be an absolute nightmare to, uh, oh, yeah, that's come out. Oh dear. Why is this not going as planned? It's like one of those daft puzzles where it will only actually work in one particular direction because that is hideous. Kind of like the wires are just getting in the way of themselves where this just isn't quite long enough it's very very typical of all of this kind of genre of chinese stuff which is kind of basically almost disposable because if you take it apart once unless you've got the patience it's kind of never going to go back together and i can't see for the life of me how i'm going to get that to go back in so i'm going to stop the video now Okay, so it is some time later, much later. Have I still even got my microphone on? Yes, I have. Um, so this side now, the side which is normally exposed to the uh, outside world, 
Now it looks okay, the screws actually even fit and all that kind of stuff, and you can still gain access to the, uh, the six pin power connector down on this end. And all those wires have now disappeared. And if we flip this round, you now see I've actually put the wire through there and I've actually had to cut a little bit of the plastic out in order to make this basically fit. I could have done with taking a little bit more plastic out to be fair, which I might still do, but uh, I don't think that's gonna foul on much with this cable here. When you plug it into the PCI slot, it should kind of just uh, move it out of the way slightly. Not ideal, but sadly, there wasn't really a great deal else I could do with this. It has been something of a uh, an exquisite pain in the ass. Not happy at all, really. So, yeah, well, it is what it is. The fans are, as you can see, now attached. And both of them spinning. It's like a new world, although they're not as uh, transparent or opaque as the previous ones, but I think they actually look fine, and uh, I'm guessing the standard black ones might even just be a little bit stronger anyway, but it works okay, or at least it fitted reasonably okay after, but yeah, it wasn't quite the uh, the plug-in-play experience I'd hoped for. Okay, so we're done, and uh, yeah, the graphics card is now in one piece and ready to be used in our little Micro ATX build, which we'll be doing two days' time which you probably won't see, or you may have probably seen already before you see this video. It's a very confusing thing, this whole YouTube thing and stacking up videos. Anyway, so the fans have worked. They are on there. Um, they're pushed into place. They're stretched in. It's not perfect, but it seems to be uh, working. Like if there's any knocks or damage, they may pop out of those little lugs, but hopefully you shouldn't be doing that to your PC. Like I said, I've actually rewired it. So the wires now actually, there's nothing on this side so it actually makes that look a little bit neater. On the other side, there is a cut out of the plastic, which I may cut a little bit more, just to give that cable a little bit more flexibility on that side section. The actual top casing fits on perfectly now, and the screws have gone in straight and flat, which is always a nice thing to see. So I guess really, how would I summarize this whole experience? Now it starts off with this being on, I think it's UK Hot Deals, and some other YouTubers have mentioned them, in passing and oh, this is a great fantastic deal and to be fair if you manage to buy one at the original price it's somewhere really about 70 dollars or something if it turned up it worked first time then yes it's absolutely great if for some reason yours either didn't turn up or turned up damaged or had to have replacement parts and if yours needs replacement parts in the future you may still struggle to get this to go together. There's possibly many of you out there that have been screaming at the screen, saying, Mike, just turn this round this way, it'll be fine. You're probably right. But I'm used to putting things together, computing stuff to some extent, uh, not so much with graphics cards, but with components in general. We build PCs almost every week, if not more. So it's not my first gig. And this hasn't been an entirely user-friendly experience in my opinion. Now, if I take into account the time that I've spent hassling with AliExpress to begin with and actually trying to get a result. That was best part of a couple of days over the course of two weeks. It's not been straightforward. It's not been plain sailing. So my recommendation is if you want a uh, hassle-free life, maybe look for a graphics card possibly from a friend if you know this one they're selling and it's in A1 condition, that sort of stuff. Or turn to just buy a new one. The prices that are coming on the market at the moment, especially things like the RX 6600, is a really good price for what it is. It's a lot faster than this, double the double the speed and basically double the price. So you're kind of getting what you pay for. That is a really good value at the moment. I personally think that the extra time and money and well, the fans were paid for by Ugly Bob in his drunken stupor. I've paid for a set as well, which may be somewhere else on the way. Who knows? That could be them, I don't know. Yeah, it's not been great. And if I charge by the hour for the time that I spent messing around with this and also kind of replacing the fans, I've probably spent another 50, 60, maybe even 100 pounds in my own personal time when I could be making videos or I could be doing other things or actually having a life. So if you value your time or you're paid by the hour and you get maybe $20 an hour, 20 pounds an hour in your day job, just do an extra couple of hours work and buy a new decent graphics card which is not going to be shipped halfway around the world and possibly turn up broken. That is my uh, my recommendation to you. But for those of you that want to take a punt and uh, don't mind it if it turns up 
broken and like the challenge of reinstalling bits if it goes wrong, then yeah, this is definitely right up your street. So anyway, I've walked on for way too long. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video of me, uh, well, basically fannying around with this for way, way too long. Hopefully it's going to go into a build this weekend, which I'm really looking forward to and uh, seeing what it's actually like now with the fans in place, getting temperatures and all that kind of good stuff, which I might even do a follow-up video on. Anyway, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.